Anyway, regardless, we got Ragnarok versus Nice here in the top right side, the blue Zerg from Alpha X. He is Ragnarok. Bottom left side, Red Brodos player also from Alpha X. He is nice. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Went a wee, wee, wee bit wobbly there. Man, Ragnarok's just continuously getting his hatches blocked. It's weird how this became meta. I mean, at some point, Brodos are going to stop doing this, right? At some point, they are. I mean... Zerg's already incorporated the way to kind of deal with this by sending that drone out a little bit earlier so you can see is there a probe here yes no all right move over here still 300 hatchery I guess it's still beneficial for you as a protoss to have that base be further away if you are going to do the adept pressure but that's about it that's that's about it right you are losing some overall mining here, just by not having that probe going around on the minerals. I guess you do get the scouting information, I suppose, right? That's also quite, quite important to obtain, I suppose. You need to know, yeah, I suppose that is probably the more important part, huh? Being able to see whether or not it's a spawning pool first and a big ling flood onto your front door. Because then you really need to do a lot of infrastructure as quickly as possible in order not to die instantly. So, I suppose it is more so about that rather than actually getting the hatch block. But you may as well get the hatch block while you're there as well, right? So, yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. Figuring out StarCraft 2 as I go along. It's only been casting for, what? Uh, almost two years. Just a professional level casting, that's okay. It's alright. <laughs> ah, it's all good, it's all swell. It's a complicated game. Everyone will say. It's why we love it, isn't it? Stargate here, Fort Nice. Circlings running around wherever they can. Some to scout, some to try and block the adept from do, uh, doing a bit too much work on the drone line here. Look at that. Nice blocking going on from Ragnarok. Doesn't quite get the, uh, the spore crawler created there. But only loses one drone, so that's quite nice. Bit unfortunate for Nice that the Zergling actually does get inside of this base. There's still an Overlord here as well, which is going to be dealt with by the Void Ray, I would imagine. Um... Don't ban. I think, you know what? Maybe I just might. <laughs> there we go. Okay, here we go. There's uh, quite a couple of circlings here, actually. We'll be able to stop that third base from going up. a lot less overall the people begging for for <laughs> follows and such in the uh, in the chat but apparently it's it's still going on apparently that's still a thing well jokes on them they don't know that these are all starcraft 2 fans that are just here for uh for well all these lovely players we got See. 
zapping around the Zerg base with the Oracle as well. Only getting two kills right there. Roach Warren is on the way for Mr. Ragnarok. Also a lair. Looking to get himself uh, probably the Roach speed. How do we have the Evo Chambers as well? No, we do not. Oh, God, he's losing more workers right now. Ooh, that is, oh, that is disgusting. Oh, that is just two adepts. That's just two adepts. They're not done yet, guys. They're still going. Oh, no, Ragnarok. Oh, no, Ragnarok. Ragnarok, please. All right, well, that is, that's one way of, uh, of, you know, winning a StarCraft 2 game. That's at like almost six minutes as well. Well, five and a half minutes in and suddenly two adepts has come in and do that much damage. That is ridiculous. Uh, status trap. Oh, that got real close, didn't it? Only two drones. That is uh, quite fortunate there. Uh, the Oracle will not be coming back around anymore because it did get taken out, but still. It's a mental thing at this point in time. Guess that is a bit of a boost, though, isn't it? Getting the Oracle and not, like, on, just on the verge of getting, like, six uh, drones is absolutely hammered by the status trap right there. Full Void Race now coming for the main base. That spawning pool looking a little bit exposed, perhaps. Maybe able to take on the Queens. More Queens will need to be pulled away. It's going to go straight for that spawning pool right now. Nice micro backwards with whichever Void Ray does get a little bit low. And there you are. Well done. Gets the spawning pool. Makes life a living hell once again for Ragnarok here. It's already, uh, it's already in possession of a Hydralisk Den. So it's still going to be able to make some sort of a... A force, right? And the Hydras maybe even preferable over the Zerklings at this moment in the game. So as to Roach Warren as well. But that being said, he's only got four Zerklings, so needs to be uh, careful with those. Because they are one of his main scouting tools, of course, in this uh, situation. Sort of scouting overlords and the spotter overlords have been targeted down by the Void Race. Another base there being cancelled, actually, as well. More damage being obtained... As Ragnarok is just lying bleeding on the ground here, it seems. Trying to stim the bleeding and trying to somehow stop Nice from just uh, continuously gut punching him. You know what? Considering what everything that happens in this game, I'd say he's still in a, you know, in a, in a, in a somewhat respectable position. Somewhat respectable position, right? I mean... Considering everything that happens, he still has those Hydras, he has those Roaches. I guess he's getting himself a fourth base. It's a bit, a bit of a shame that he didn't get the fourth base settled over here. Um, the work account, not too far in, um, in Nice's favor. And maybe we will still be able to get uh, Ragnarok to ramp that up a little bit here. And he's going to go into Lurkus, right? So you don't need that many workers when you're going into Lurkus anyway. At least I assume he is. Because I see the infestation pit, the plus one, plus one. He's not being aggressive whatsoever. Assuming this is going to be for the Lurkus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that is a rough place to be. He doesn't have the Hydra speed upgrade just yet. It's still quite a ways off, so a lot of these Hydras actually getting caught off as they're trying to escape. Not that many remain right now. Three still in the back foot of things. So a lot of Zealots now sh just using their side blades onto these uh, Hydras. The Void Race trying to gun down every single Hydra that is still in the plane of existence. Quite a couple of them going down as well. And now there's not that much remaining that is going to be able to deal with these Void Race. Nice micro there from Nice as well. Moving backwards. The Queens. Are the Queens enough? There's four Queens here. The yeah, Void Race are quite low, so... Has to be careful. Ooh, yeah. Does not want to lose those. Gets the hack out of there. All right. To be fair, I mean, Nice mostly lost, what, uh, Zealots there? Two Archons. Maybe a few Void Race. Nothing too expensive. 
Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. Dwindled down the Hydra accounts a ton as well, so Ragnarok is kind of forced to remake that. But I, I do believe that the intention for Nice there was to actually take out that base. And he did fill with that um, with that effort. So in a way, I suppose that is a to the benefit of uh, of Ragnarok there. Supplies looking pretty swell for him as well now. Big warp in there with the zealots. Whoppers may want to get the heck out of there. Did keep the Zerg army inside of the Zerg base though, which is also quite important at this moment because look at that supply right now. 121 army supply versus 66. Nice is going to have to have one hell of an engagement here. I guess he does have Storm, so there's the possibility to make something happen. The Void Rays are a bit scary here because there's, well, not a lot they can do in a situation like this. Less of those Storms again, right? Get everything done. There we go. Not really so far. The Roach is not getting on top of the High Templar either, though, to be fair. A lot of the Hydra is not actually helping out with the battle that is occurring. More so preoccupied taking out gateways instead. Not the main thing to do in these types of situations. More great storms from Nice. We're now being able to uh, slowly whittle down the Hydra in numbers. 10 probes, 11 actually going down so far. But that is acceptable losses here for Nice so far. Probably doesn't want to lose too many more though. Uh, they're not in the main base so that is clear. He is going to hold so 52 workers versus 67. It's a lot better than I thought it would go here for uh, for Nice, to be honest. Losing a couple of High Templars, so that is a bit of a bummer. Wants to send those probes back to work. I think he forgot. Okay, okay. Again, no, no Hive transition here from Ragnarok. Ragnarok really does seem to be... A Zerg that likes to stay a bit longer onto the Hydra Roach army composition. Doesn't quite do as much with the Lurkers, or the really quick Lurkers anyway. we got Hive Tech on the way now, and still no Lurker then. I mean, he's kind of around the right amount of money. But prioritizing upgrades, more Hydras, Roaches, okay, there it is. For a moment there, I thought he may just attempt to go for the um, for the Vipers together with the Hydras and the Roaches instead. Work account back up to snuff here for nice. Looking good. Army supplies, though, once again, quite heavily favoring Ragnarok here. Could this be the moment? It is still Hydras and Roaches, though. Still no Lurkers in the mix. Gonna try once again that multi pronged aggression here. As he likes to do against Protoss, it seems. On the fourth base and the natural. Nice. How well is he? Uh, dealing with this. He's got a good bit of infrastructure here to deal with the right side, the left side. A bit more scary, but he's got a ton of storms. So as long as he stays on top of that uh, of that micro right there, should be able to hold the front door as well as the, the back alleyway here. Ooh, Wrecking Ball getting everything together now, though. We'll try to just Wrecking Ball his way through the right side. Nah, it's going to just back up. This is going to back up. I mean, the Lurker upgrades are coming in here, so... It would make sense to really start the Lurker production. Should probably focus the low HP uh, Hydra there as he's doing right now. Transform those into the Lurkers. Couple of roaches. Oh, ah, <laughs> no you won't! Nice on top of things here. Able to deal with that quite handedly. How many lurks we got? 
Seven so far. The Vipers coming in as well. Uh, only two so far. I think two is okay. I always prefer to have three for the Zerg. Three or four. Just to make life a little bit easier for yourself. Whoosh. Finds those roaches. Ragnarok's creep spread has been uh, has been kicking some serious behind right now, hasn't it? Definitely going some places. And again, to be fair, Nice never... Well, he, I guess he had the one push towards here, right? But never really was out and about on the map that much. Maybe some zealots run by and stuff like this, but... The more creep there is, the harder that is going to be to make work. As we can see right now, instantly you're just spotted by that uh, by those creep tumors. By that purple goo. Carrier transition is coming in. As we are prepping for an extreme late game here. Between Ragnarok and Nice. Battle lines are being drawn. Nice is trying to fight himself into a better position to, uh, to get rid of this. As much creep as possible, right? The objective here. Two spires. Okay, I like that. Just gonna go for the double upgrades right now. Seeing those carriers realizing, you know what, I probably should invest into a bit of air of my own. And when you do it, you better do it well. It's the saying of the old people. If you're gonna do it, do it well. <laughs> Or do it good? Is it good or well? I don't even know. One of those. Anyway, we need another storm here, perhaps. Not gonna happen. Those feedbacks were very good, though. I mean, all the Vipers now going back home. Ooh, but the Lurker. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of a surprise there. Still for nice. Being caught out. Good slow zone right there. Not gonna allow those uh, Lurkers and Hydras to escape here. No enough Hydras, it seems, to really deal with the carriers, especially without any type of uh, Viper presence to really help out with this situation. But the Intercept is also quite low right now. We have more Interceptors coming in. And that is going to be a cleanup here. The Isle of Protoss has been once again secured. Units loss ratio, definitely in favor here for nice, but I mean, we, we know how this kind of works, right? The Zerg just has more bases mining for the time being. Uh, probably wants to grab itself another base overall. And in particular, if you can grab a couple of minerals, even just slightly, maybe even just long distance mine if your mining is oversaturated in other bases. I think even if it isn't, maybe it would be worth it just trying to grab away minerals from your opponent as much as possible. Those resources, they are extremely valuable. And you need to have the added in minerals. Or, uh, you can of course deny a base continuously. That is a possibility as well, but very difficult to do. Always a lot easier for the Protoss. Oh my god, those disruptor shots! It's like five lurkers at the same time being shot down there with two disruptor shots. The Vipers trying to catch every bit of uh, every bit of carrier they can, but still quite a few remaining here. The Storm's not really participating within that fight just quite yet. Disruptors now more so starting to come into play. We still have those Storms available. There they are. That's going to help out a ton. Look at the HP bars on those Hydras instantly dropping. Uh, we did have Void Race coming into the main base, by the way. My dear lord, I did miss that. Looks like the Hive attack and the... Sp uh, no, the Spawning Pool died before. So it is just the Hive that got slain there. The two Spires need a bit of creep. I'm sure that will be spread out over there in a moment. We do have two Queens there, after all. Right, that would be embarrassing. Losing two Spires here. 
man, those disruptor shots on those lurkers, though. That was nutty. Considering Nice's army was mainly consisting out of carriers anyway, I'm not sure if they would have made the biggest difference in the game overall, but uh, definitely would have helped out against those High Templars and the, uh, the Hydras, right? You have a place to fall back onto, and then the High Templar will not be able to push any further forwards. Oh, it's going to commit here. Storm's Disruptor Shorts. Getting itself another connection. There we go. Getting another one. Ah, it's just endless amounts of uh, connections right there. More feedbacks as well. The storm's getting a little bit low, though. Also, the amount of disruptors we have available with uh, disruptor shots could be a bit troubled right now. Seeing the amount of hydras that are still available. Going to try to take out the interceptors. Move out of the storm there. Ah, this is just too much carrier firepower, I believe. I thought we only have plus one attack. Maybe the Hydras will be able to reign supreme here. Getting underneath the uh, the carriers. But there are the Zealots. Reinforcing as well. The Storm helping out a ton again. Alright. Nice once more holds on here. Ragnarok trying to finish off his opponents. Uh, trying to squeeze himself into a position where Nice is forced to try and deal with him instead of he with him. But it's just not quite working out in his favor. A lot of those Lurker eggs now, once again, in production. Eight of them in total. It's always a kind of a, a scary thing, fighting against those Disruptors, of course. I think it's quite important to actually be able to uh, have a bit of a pre-spread of those Lurkers before you even really try to commit there. Right. Whether you're coming from two angles, whether you're... you're Trying to already get those those locusts a bit spread out. It's important stuff to do. It's difficult to do as well, to be fair. Because you're you're basically trying to preemptively figure out where a battle is going to be happening before the battle is happening, of course. So you need to have knowledge of your opponent's army uh, position as well. So here is Ragnarok trying to figure it out. Doesn't quite know that the army is here, of course, right now. Okay. Uh, it's still just going to slam all those uh, lurkers together. No disruptors this time around, though, to take advantage of that situation. The Hydra account. Is the Hydra account too low? I think it very well may be. More lurkers going down again here. And, I mean, sure, you can trade in efficiently as the Zerg, but that is just way too cost inefficient. GG is called. Nice. Takes game number one after a... Well fought, 22 minutes of battle. Ah, all right. Moving on forwards, map number two. Let's see. Wait for the game. There we go. Uh, Death Aura. Death Aura. We're loading it up right now. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't really harp on on this just quite yet. But I suppose we should. Uh, there is a Machurino. If you haven't already, we would very much appreciate every single contribution on that Machurino page. Uh, the bot right now already showing it. You know what? Actually, let me see if I can quickly, like, just, just like a, a quick, brief, quick second do it myself as well here. See if that is set up correctly. Yes, it is. Lovely. All right. So, here's what you do. Sign in. Twitch. We only have one dollar. Really? Honestly? Oh, no. Okay. It's a bit more. <laughs> it's a bit more. But still, guys. I think we can do better than that. I think we can. Right? I mean, we're StarCraft 2 fans. If there's anything we can do, it's bloody well pressing buttons. Right? That is, like, one of the main things you do as a StarCraft 2 nerd. It's pressing buttons quite quickly. That's all you need to do, right? Sign in, contribute, fill in the code AX256, contribute, done. Easy. Just like that. And these players will love you all the more for it. All the more. Alright, game number game number two. In the bottom right side, the blue Brodos player fighting for Alpha X. As nice. The Taiwanese Brodos right here. 
Sometimes I forget hey, the time in East Brothers. In the top left side, the red Zerg player. Also Elf Axe. What a surprise. He is Ragnarok. Oh, um, Tagera also asking, so only nice versus sound left. Uh, we will be casting that after this one as well. And then afterwards, we'll do a bit of Bion versus Serral. Um, that is going to be uh, from another event. So not this event that is going on right now, but it will be from a previous event from the, uh, from the past, which is the TSL. And we'll do a bit of casting from those games also. We'll get ourselves a bit of extra um, overall StarCraft 2 uh, funfair going on here. Wait a moment. There was no pro blocking the hatchery this time. Curious. Guess you don't have to do it every single game, but... Ooh. Still, that is what it looked like it was going to be. Stargate on the way. It's the important bit. Immediately going into the Oracle here. No Void Ray this time around. Could of course later turn into a Void Ray. We also have a Proxy Pylon right now. Doesn't have a Twilight, does he? No, okay. Could just be a warp in point for adepts here. Let's see. How many gateways? Only one. Yeah, only one. So, interesting. Would assume he's going to make a gateway then on uh, the other side of the map here, right? With that pylon. Cancel. Okay. Whew, that'll get close. Scary moments there. Okay, there we go. Two more gateways on the way. Could be just some uh, adepts without the glaives here coming up behind the oracles. The oracles are forcing out those uh, ball crawlers, I suppose. Already getting a couple of kills here. Four, five, six. Not bad. Seven. Gonna get eight. Uh, Would have been a bit too greedy, it seems. So, not gonna go for it. Proper micro there. I'm going up to yeah, it's still three gates, right? Yeah. Okay. For a moment, I thought we were going up to the four gates here, but ah, it's not the case. Still just the, the three. How's Ragnarok? How is Ragnarok responding to this? Right now, he's just making a ton of drones. This is kind of interesting, right? Because the way you usually play against the Oracle and Stargate opening would be just by making a ton of workers. Because you know there's not going to be a lot of pressure behind this. So now... Suddenly, when there's adepts here, do we have anything to deal with this? I don't think we do. I don't think we do at all. It doesn't really matter that you don't have the adept uh, glaive either. Why? Well, it's because there's nothing here to stop them. <laughs> there's just nothing here to stop them. Gonna shade past. No, he's still gonna commit to these uh, drones right here. So far, 15 drones in total killed off. That's minus 7, of course, because of the, uh, the earlier oracle place. So that is what? Eight workers being killed off right now over in this uh, location here. To next, is this a replay? It's uh, it's from the live event that we were doing, uh, well, today, right now. But yeah, these games were played while we were casting something else, so... I mean, never before seen games still that I don't know the conclusion of. Nobody really knows the conclusion of, except for probably Nice and Arachnarok here, but still. They were played mere minutes ago. Alright. So 
a lot of adepts now. It's a lot of zerglings as well, though. I'm gonna cancel that shade, probably for the best. Trying to wiggle himself in the <laughs> best uh, position possible here. Just shooting down all the zerglings he can. 21 drones now in total. Did get slain. Oh, the adept's not quite yet in a good position here. Okay, do manage to... Uh, actually, nope, 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 nope. That's a lot of surface area right there still being provided. Roach is now as well coming into play. Shooting down the warp in points. Ragnarok may have found himself a bit of momentum. Uh, even though his work account still absolutely gutted here. Oh, wow. Where did that circling come from? Unlucky for nice. <laughs> Setting up some status traps immediately just being set off. It's going to have another one set off over here. It's like, man, putting in so much effort to try and make this work, and then you're just, you're just there. Is he just sending in those zerglings? He's trying to get the scout off. Uh, but then every single time it's like, oh, well, status trap. Oh, darn, another status trap. Alright, Spire now has been completed by Ragnarok. Will immediately go straight into a lot of uh, Mutilisk care. Now that's something nice, probably not expecting at all in this situation. Seeing, uh, seeing Roaches by this amount more likely to get the transition into the Hydras, I would say. Ling Ravager. And there we go. There suddenly is a lot of Mutalisk. Oracle's trying to get the heck out of there. Still only... Well, actually, it does get two of them uh, away. Ooh, great force fuels here on the left side. Look at that. Nice getting some uh, some value there as well. Let's see how much these Mutalisks will be able to do. It's a good amount of Stalkers here. Should not be able to do too much, honestly. How many Mutalisks did we get? Seven of them in total, and that's about it. Not making anything more. Nice is investing into Phoenixes, though. Could be another way for the uh, for the Mutalisk in order to gain some value here. Forcing out a ton of uh, Phoenixes and then suddenly just going for something entirely different. Which is going to be the case here. Hydrodan and Infestation Pits coming up for Ragnarok. Alright, fourth base here for Nice. Coming up. Quite nice on, uh, nicely on time. Creep spread for Ragnarok is okay. Would like it to be a bit better towards the fifth base, but there we go. He's gonna grab himself this fifth base. This is still acceptable, right? I think this is still pretty darn good creep spread here, overall. Considering the amount of aggression that he was under in the uh, the start of this game, losing 24 workers here. Pretty darn nutty. More status traps kind of preventing those uh, Zerglings from gaining any type of scouting information. Well, I guess in a, in a way, Ragnarok now has just a, a scout here continuously. That cannot be killed, to be fair. One over here as well. That's kind of a funny thing, isn't it? The downside of the, uh, of the status trap, I suppose. Okay, the Phoenix is seeing that there is, in fact, the Hydras out now, so... How many phoenixes is that? Five phoenixes in total were created here trying to combat the Mutalisk. And the Mutalisk, I mean, where are they? They are just trying to prevent War Prisms from gaining access into the main base, which is something that was bothering him, uh, bothering him quite a bit that previous game, of course. So, I like this idea. Uh, are there any playoffs or are the games just for fun? It's like a round-robin tournament, so it's... Uh, yeah, so it's a round robin tournament. <laughs> we see who gets the best points here. The most points. And then see who gets on top of the groups.
Let's see a bit of damage there. More lurkers being constructed as we speak. Those upgrades are getting closer and closer to finishing up. Disruptors coming down for Nice. This time around, it's a bit of a different scenario, right? Nice was the player that got himself the quicker endgame army composition. This time around, it seems like uh, Ragnarok kind of taking charge of that department. Wasn't quite doing this against uh, Zaun either. Observer here, surprisingly. We'll be able to get on top of some of the static defenses right now, but at the same time, the retreating path does force those oracles and the uh, Colossi past these spore crawlies. He's taking a ton of extra damage. He's now turning around to try and take the fight head on with the Lurker Hydra Roach army, though. Those Lurkers getting uh, scarily close. He's losing a lot of them, though, as he's moving forwards here. Hmm. It's a weird game, isn't it? Nice being able to stay on top of this base as well. That's a lot of drones here. Once again, gonna get squished out. 34 workers have been slain. Nice still only on four bases to be fair. So army supply not looking all too swell, but it's probe count. Quite something else. Is he oversaturated somewhere else? No, he is not. Okay. Oh, wait a moment. In the middle of the map, suddenly just a couple, a handful of Zerglings with the Mutalisk being able to intercept like a... I don't even know. That was four Disruptors right there. All going down on the same place. Ragnarok may have found himself an opportunity here. With all those Disruptors going down, this may be a Golden Goose opportunity for him to try and get himself into the third base location. And shut it down. We just shut down Nice entirely. As uh, Nice is also mid-transition with the Stargates here. He's got three Stargates. So far, zero... Well, one carrier right now. That has only just been produced. Doesn't have any upgrades. Doesn't have much of anything. There are the Disruptor Shorts missing their target this time around. Great feedbacks though, once again. Ragnarok definitely seeming to struggle quite a bit against those, uh, against those feedbacks. Moving his, um, moving his fight is a bit too recklessly forwards. And you always need to be aware of that type of uh, maneuvering with your units. Which ones are going to be moving too far forward. Which ones you need to micro backwards sometimes now and again. Here we go. Disruptor's definitely getting some, gr some reasonable shots. Some connections happening here. But I think Ragnarok doing a lot better of a job as well. Of just kind of splitting up his... Uh, Splitting up his disrupt or um, lurkers against the disruptor shots. We'll be able to get underneath this carrier as well. Only a single interceptor. That's not going to save him. Careful. All right. There we go. GG is called. Ragnarok takes game number two. Game number two. All right. Final game will be on Oxide. Let's just head on over to that one right now. Uh, so, yeah, the games are not just for fun. It is just the, um, you know, there's still a prize pool on the line. They are professional players, after all. They, they do play for money. In the top right side, we got ourselves a blue Zerg player fighting for Alpha X. He is Ragnarok. Taking back control of that game number two. In the bottom left side, we got ourselves the Taiwanese Protoss. Also wrapping the Alpha X banner. He is nice. Talking about money, of course, there is still that Machurino page as well. If you haven't already. Would be greatly appreciated, guys. Take a look at it. Takes a second. And we'll make the day for these players. And, you know what? Me as well. 
overall StarCraft always benefits of getting some more codes added in, right? More sponsors are like, oh, wait a moment, there's quite a couple of people actually looking at these StarCraft pages over here and putting in the work. Looks like, you know what, that StarCraft game, that could be a good spot to invest into through the Machirino. Alphax, I think actually overall, $80,000 being, uh, being contributed last year through Machirino, so... That is quite something. That is quite something. That's all thanks to people like yourself adding in codes, putting in the work, even though it's just a slight bit of clicking. That's all. You can also buy yourself the replay pack there as well if you want to have these games. All will be available over there. No hatch block once again here, coming out of nice. Wondering what kind of attack we're gonna get out of nice this time around. I would assume it's going to be the Stargate again, right? That's that's pretty much been the what it's been going for continuously here. Exactly that will be the case, the Stargate. Going to be interesting to see whether or not he goes for that in the uh, the PvP matchup going up as well. Of course, nice a expert on the department of PvP as. Yes. His main rival on his uh, servers is going to be Haas. He does meet Haas quite <laughs> quite the numerous amount of time on the, uh, the Taiwanese uh, scene. Whether that be tournaments or ladder or anything like that. Maybe some, uh, some internal practice they do together. Oh, that's always awkward, isn't it? I don't think there is a good spot for that Overlord to be there. Being able to shut that down, even being, making sure that he has a pylon in the front door, just in case if there's like Zergling suddenly about to run by, we'll be able to be uh, kind of defend against that as well. Well done indeed. Void race, it is going to be this time around. Another void ray already in production, just gonna have to wait for that pylon. A bit of a supply block right now. Not great, but. It's not that bad. Could have been worse. It was already on the way. Alright. So, little Reggie. Little Reggie, what you up to, mister? And I got himself that Roach Warren here. Fleet Beacon very early on for Nice this time around. Nice is gonna do a bit of a gamble here, I suppose. Off of the two base as well. Let's see if he still attempts to get himself that third. Without a third base being established, Ragnarok may just be uh, may just be assuming that it's going to be something else entirely. I mean, he could assume that it's going to be the Void Ray with the Adept Pressure as well that we've already seen. Could be a numerous amount of things, right? The Fleet Beacon, not something you assume immediately. I think it will just be for the Void Ray speed, as we are seeing another Stargate being constructed. Although he didn't start up another Void Ray here. Could be Carrier still. Drum roll, please. What do we have? Okay, it is Void Ray, actually. It's just another supply block, though. That is the problem. <laughs> that is the problem here. It's an embarrassing problem to have. Especially because there's Zerglings at your front door. The Void Rays are on the other side of the map here. Zergling still just uh, nibbling, nibbling away. The rest of them also coming in right now. This could become quite the hassle. Uh, nah, okay, he's gonna move backwards here. Void Ray still uh, on this side of the map, looking for overlords. Getting, uh, getting two of them so far. Not bad, not bad. Let's see, actually, how many did he get? Three, one. Not sure if that is entirely overlord stuff. Of course, to be fair. <laughs> 
maybe, yeah. He did get six of them so far, so let's head off to him. Don't see uh, Overlord Hunters get that amount of Overlords all that often. So that's nice to see. There is that uh, Void Ray Speed almost finishing up right now. Also getting himself the plus one air weapons upgrade. I think I've seen Nice do the mass Void Ray style before as well. I think it was against Rogue. Wasn't that wasn't that Nice versus Rogue? I think it was. And then suddenly it was just Void Rays actually beating Hydras at some point. It was it was rather ridiculous. And I was just sitting there thinking to myself, wait a minute, this is not is this is this the StarCraft 2? Did we get StarCraft 3 released at some point and I just missed it? Did they buff Void Rays? I don't think they did, did they? And then, yeah, it, it can get rather ridiculous. Um, oh, wow, that's a good force field. But still going to lose those two sentries, though, of course. At least we'll be able to take some revenge here. The adept's there, taking a while before they actually got back there. Void Ray Speed, of course, uh, being seen here as well. Full Void Rays. What are they going to be targeting down? Yeah, too many queens to really do anything. He needs to get the rest of the Void Rays together as well if he really wants to um, do a bit of damage on that uh, type of space. Oh, no. Ooh, that is rough. Okay. You're not allowed to lose Void Rays like that. Not allowed to at all. A lot of queens. There's a lot of queens starting to march across the map here. It's making still more Zerglings as well, as well as the Hydralisk. It's going to be an, an attempt to actually break the uh, break the third base, but he's going to lose his own third base just in the meanwhile. I hope Nice realizes, wait a moment, there's nothing here to defend. It must be elsewhere. It must be coming for me. And that is exactly what's happening here. Let's go! Reasonable amount of those uh, force fields that should help out a ton in these types of situations. Look at how well the two Void Rays are doing on their own already. Uh, Zerglings also trying to break into the natural base, but that is going to be held. Do we have another force field here? Would be rather beneficial, I think. We, all, we may not even need it here. The Queens are having a rough time getting through the, the choke point, but overall, these Void Rays, they are doing one hell of a job kind of targeting down units. One by one, there we go. We have another shield battery kind of finishing up here. Shield battery overcharge, not accessible for the time being, but Ragnarok kind of struggling to force himself through the choke for the time being. You want to have those hydras in front of Queens a little bit longer with that range, of course. To be careful with that type of micro. Can get a lot more damage done if you have those uh, hydras and Queens correctly positioned together. There we go. It's kind of working on that right now. That, this should be good for Ragnarok. Is it? No, that's still a lot of units being warped in. The Void Rays, I'm telling you. They still do a lot of damage here, especially with that uh, extra <laughs> upgrades going in here. And yeah, Ragnarok kind of running his head into a brick wall right now. He's going to have to make a choice here. What will be happening next? Moving back to his own side of the field. He still has a reasonable amount of workers. But he lost this base, of course. So now it's three base versus three base. It's never a place you want to be at as a Zerg. Lost a ton of queens overall. A ton of value there. The gas count overall still a little bit similar. So... Rover book. Treasure books has been unleashed. The winner is Mimi. All right. I think that is another streamer, right? That's interesting. All right, I don't know what is going on there. Oh. All right. More void ray pressure. Looks like Ragnarok gonna ignore it for now. It's gonna go straight to the other side of the map. It's gonna lose another hatchery here. I think recall is available, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it is. Also, the shield battery is available. We need to have good force fields here. He needs to buy himself some time. Where are the force fields? All right, there they are. Waiting for the void race, I suppose, in order to try and make this as uh, 
Winnable as possible, but you know what? There we go. Doesn't uh, didn't even need him that much. GG is called. Nice. Taking game number three, and we'll be able to, uh, to claim victory over that best of three.